Do you want me to tell you where I just came from? Can I just get it off my chest because I'm like burning and foaming at the it, mouth? You look like your rabbit dog. You know, I'm just not going to say it was El Pollo Loco because I don't want to be rude. You did just say it's El Pollo Loco. 45 minutes later, I'm still in the line that I entered. It was in a long line. It was like there was five people. Yeah, but you don't do anything fast. Don't add insult to injury. This is a moment for you to, an opportunity for you to come in and be like, baby, come here. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in, You kid. should say, come here. Let me give you a hug. Let me squeeze your ass. Let me give you a kiss because you know I love your kisses. Bring it in, kid. So Bring it in, not, kid. So you're just saying that. We have too much of a divide between us. There's an actual physical divide between us. But when I walked in, stomping and like stomping the ground like well, a Well, anytime man, you stomp anything with them feet, I get a little bit hesitant and hide. If this were couples therapy, I'd say, I just wish that sometimes you would comfort and ease my woes. Okay, baby. Welcome back to a new episode of Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. This is actually a special episode. It is because we posted on Instagram on Till the Dirt's IG. Please send in topics and questions about what you guys want to talk about. And you guys sent us in all these questions. We are literally reading from the uh, ones that we could cover. There was a ton of questions. We're incredibly grateful for the response. The only reason we did it in the first place was because everybody was hitting us up personally in our DMs, asking us questions. And so we just said, all right, let's just do it in an episode. The response and the outpouring was tremendous. And there's only so much time. So we cherry picked and we got some of the questions that we thought were the best ones. My wife picked some. I picked some. I don't know what she picked. She doesn't know what I picked. Then we have our executive producer, Narod. She picked some. So Narod. it's going to be like a cavalcade, a, a salad, a mystery of questions that we're going to leave a up to her. Board? A smorgasbord, right? Okay. The other thing you were going to say is that we'll do this again. In the future? Yeah, no, listen, maybe? In, in theory... Did you tell we'll them about doing, the prizes? There'll be many more of these, yes. Right. And any question that gets read on the show, oh, you guys will get way, a t-shirt. You guys, remember one thing. If you want to stay anonymous, a lot of you said, keep me anonymous. And then some of you said, go ahead and shout me out, please, and thank you. So we're open to both. Yeah, but if you want a t-shirt, I'm going to need to know the hell who you are. Otherwise, I don't, you know, or the, the mail box. doesn't work. You can't tell the mail guy, yeah, it's anonymous. They could say anonymous at 3 Cherry Street. That that's not really that anonymous. Everybody knows Joe Schmo lives on 3 Cherry Street. No, they don't. Okay, come of on. Of course Let's they talk do. About 3 it. Cherry Street. Let's, Let's get talk into about it. it. All right, so you want to read the first question? Why don't you read the first question? All right, so our first question came from Simbi729. How do you handle finances when one makes more than the other? I love this question. I learned through time in my relationship that money doesn't matter who's making it like if you guys are both on the same page ah oh, this is a big deal i like where you started there though so i do i like okay. where you started. If money you doesn't are, matter and if the couple is on the same page about that what the direction of the household is like what what's the end goal if we're on the same page for that i think that that the money doesn't matter where it's coming out from how it gets there but, and and part b for simma's question 729 is what if you guys agreed and then one of you comes home with a cherry red Porsche in the driveway. You also have to agree if you both accept doesn't matter who's making the money, doesn't it also matter how people are spending the money in a relationship? A million percent. So yes, that's what I think the part A of the question we're both we're simpatico on. And I think we both agree that, you know, if we're both pulling the rope to the same direction and we have the same plan, then yes, the money doesn't matter. But Part B of what you said is when someone goes off board. That's a violation of the trust. Let's use us as an example. Okay. You and I, both in our marriage, we're not counting each other's dollars. No. But if you saw me come home with a new Chanel bag every week, you'd probably have to stop me and say, who the fuck are we, the Rockefellers? Yes, like, we I, don't I, have I, the money would, for that. I would count those dollars. I would definitely <laughs> count those dollars. <laughs> But yeah, you wouldn't do that. I, I like you. you know, no, I we wouldn't. got a kid. We're married. We're far down the path. Hold you, for, on. For you we'll to all of a sudden take that type of crazy turn would be weird. What about the couple that we know right now? Look at me. She comes home 
with Chanel boots, Chanel purses, and you have and had this conversation. Post. I love him to death, but he doesn't know what any of that costs. But see, for you to say you don't do that is not the question. What if? There are people who do. There are people no, in relationships. You know, listen, I, you, you, uh, there's people that all of a sudden get a gambling problem late, you know, late in life. And, you know, oh, I, so I, you're, you're, you're saying that if one of you spends in the eyes of the other irresponsibly in the eyes of the other that that's like a shopping addiction so you have to live within your means well so you have to create a budget you have to have a plan you the two of you have to have a plan of what the goal is for the household and, and, and big picture i'm not talking about you know day to day month to month i'm saying what do we envision for our family and you know why i'm crying right now what? because when we make a plan you and me and we do get on the same page i get so inspired by it because when we sit down and we have like our combos that are like pretty spontaneous, like, okay, it's morning. Do you have 10 minutes? We talk about our goals and those details keep a marriage or any relationship so strong. Agreed. So I think that answers that question from us. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're covering one more thing and you can shut me up. But if you have different finances, you can also keep your money separate from one another so that for the things that are rent and car insurance and mortgage and health insurance, all of those vital expenses can be split down the middle. Or if the person who makes more money wants to pay for everything, or if the person who makes more money wants to pay 80% of it and you pay 20, you know, however you guys should decide yeah, what you think how, is fair. I, but you need to have those conversations and everybody needs to be on board and everybody needs to be happy. And, and do okay it before it. it becomes a problem. But again, it all, yeah. Obviously, Get ahead of it. You know, it's something that again, you know, you need to be honest about. You can't say one thing and mean another because then you're just going to harbor resentment when things don't work out or things go a certain direction. If everybody's on the same page, like I said, I'm a big guy when it comes to like goals or mapping out things into the future. In your pants? Yeah, and I'm not just talking about the next, you know, the 30 days. I'm talking about the next five years. And if you could, <laughs> you know, get yourself on the same page as to where we want to be, then I... <laughs> I said you're big in your pants, and you go, yeah, you just get it, and you didn't notice. Well, um, no, I, I'm, I'm huge in my pants. <laughs> I, I heard what you said. A lot of people looked at you and me, and they were like, where does he come from? And I recall that I will defend us, and you and I are in a great uh, example to talk about how you started a startup and you helped grow a startup, and I was more established. I'm also a couple of oh, years no, older. Oh, no, when we met, you were making exponentially more money than I was. It was a lot more. But, you know, and it's people not something... judged And people judged our relationship For sure. from the outside because that's, like, one of the things that made me say, like, good, let us be an example for what real love looks like and respect and how you don't define each other based on money. But you define each other in the conversations that you had. Like, we knew what was up. You knew what was up with me before we even met you know what i mean because like that's up front about it yeah you know uh, there was nothing to be ashamed about every nickel that we had we put into a business that we were trying to start and get off the ground that's an american story that's what we most people do in this country at some point they throw yes. some shit against the wall and see if it will stick you no, know what the i mean american that is the the definition of the american dream yeah we took our shot you know and i've taken other shots you know at this point i put all my nuts on the table and uh you respected that i'm also a real easy going guy I, I don't need to do much i like to sit home most of the time watch tv and when you watch a game uh, you know when i'm not working so it's not You're saying you don't spend a lot of money yeah so like it wasn't like you and i like when we got together that, you know, you were making so much more money, but you had to be treated a certain way. You were fine with doing, we were just fine with, with being with each other. I knew big picture though, that, uh, you know, I wanted to give you the best things in life, but you weren't someone that required them to date you. Right. Well, I loved when you told me in an earlier podcast episode that you felt loved because I loved you despite what you were bringing to the table in the banking department in the financial aspect of our relationship which made me feel even like I love you more because I wanted that's what you want when you're a little girl and you're thinking about what you want when you grow up there are certain romantic aspects there's certain kinds of love that you imagined and that is what I imagined when I wanted something otherwise I would have gotten married when I was 21 and pushed out a couple of babies and then gotten a divorce 
then had to do soul searching and find myself again on tinder and by the way for men that aren't like confident because they don't make as much money don't beat the girls up for it please don't go to a therapist or talk to your brothers or your cousins and your fathers and like work it out don't hold if you're less successful and you're a guy don't hold it over the woman that's fucked up (laughs) that is fucked up yeah All right. How do you incorporate your parents that have passed into Sham's life? This comes from Chris J. Casello. So it's how do you incorporate your parents that have passed into Sham's life? Oh, us? Because we have passed? No, because your father's dead and so is my mother's dead. How do we incorporate them? Uh, Very easily. I'm always talking about my parents. Go to my Instagram and you'll see Tommy sitting with his son on his lap in front of pictures of... My dad and his mom telling stories and having like a moment, you will bawl your eyes out. So storytelling is the best way to keep someone's spirit alive. Tell every single day what my dad would say in this moment. I say that. I'm like, well, you know, my dad right now, he would say, if you don't love me, I still I love you. Or anything that he would say. You take do your do time. that a lot. You do do that Take a your lot. time and hurry up. Keep their spirit alive with photos let the photos be all over their, you know, in front of their faces, all over the house. And also tell the stories and have traditions that your parents would have. So I decided when you guys start doing like. That's another thing, too. It's also stuff. when they, you know, our little guy's not there. Once they, I, you're right, you should always be doing it. But I think you do a little bit more when they start to get a little, a little bit older, older and they start to be a little bit more receptive it and a little bit more inquisitive when they start asking questions like, who's that? And who, you know. And uh, I think that that's when you could could really delve a little bit deeper. And another thing we should I I think is really important is having dinner at the table together as a family. I think so, too. I think that um, incorporating those traditions that you grew up with. Yeah. Well, I didn't grow up with that. My mother was, you know, I was raised by a single mother. Her ass worked. You know what I mean? I was eating dinner by myself most times. But uh, I mean, with the little guy. I think it's important to do that, that you want to create that type of family dynamic, you know, so that that's what seems normal. I think that, you know, the, the, the cell phones got to take a, got to take a break too during dinner time. Can't have those at the table. And another thing, now that my father is no longer with us, I like for Shams to spend time with my dad's brothers and sisters because those are his extended family. Those are his grandparents too, you know? So if you have anyone in your life that can play the role of grandma and grandpa, they would probably love to jump in and be involved in that person's life. I couldn't agree more. Your uh, father had, what, 18 brothers and sisters? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, you know, so there's a lot of people that know a lot about him and can tell him all types of things. And they're not all around, obviously. But, you know, there's, def- there's definitely enough. There's we definitely- did a FaceTime at the beach, remember? Yes, there's definitely enough to, you know, to, to fill him in. All right, the next question is from Tales with Frank. What up? How is it meeting Tommy's family for the first time and how is the relationship now? Okay. Well, that's huge question. That's yeah, a whole story. Yeah, that we can't actually get into the you're still gonna get a t-shirt, Tales for Frank. Yeah. But next, <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it. You're still gonna get a t-shirt. We're not gonna we're not gonna chintz you out of a t-shirt. Uh next week's episode is actually gonna be about when we we, we just went oh. to Catalina for my wife's birthday. Okay. And the couple that we went with Ironically enough, the first time that my wife and I went back to New York together was for their wedding. So we're going to talk about all that next week. She's going to mention what it was like to meet my friends. So you, you'll get all that next week. So Tales with Frank, you're still going to get a shirt, but we're not going to answer that question now, babe. So read the next question. Okay. This is from Mo, Mom of SJO. Momo F F. No, Mom of SJO. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there you go. All right, all right, all right. How you doing? How honest should you be with your children about your past? Um, age appropriately honest. That's how honest <laughs> you should be. Whatever. It's what, a great answer. Babe. Whatever is appropriate for their age. Yeah. And I'm totally down with Santa Claus and the bunny rabbit and all of those things. No, I'm not telling my kid no lies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're kidding, actually, right? Yeah. Listen, I, I don't know. It's something that I've always been torn with. 
I got to tell you, I've always said, and I like to be a guy that sticks to what he says and sticks to his convictions. And I've always said, well, I didn't always think I was going to have a kid, but I always said that if I had a kid, I wasn't going to lie to him. And I definitely wasn't going to lie to him about the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and any of that other nonsense, you know? But now that I'm a dad, I don't know. I don't know if I could. First off, I think all the other fathers will show up to your house with a pitchfork and torches if you if you go blowing up Santa Claus's spot. You'd be that but, little uh, kid that tells all the other little kids. Yeah, it tells them, gives them the real deal. I want to give. I want to always give my son the real deal. I just worry he'll go to school and give all the other kids the real deal. And very uh, true. I wonder if they're talking about our. Our past because mom of sjo if you're talking about my past i will share specifically my past with my son i definitely don't believe that kids should hear things from another person like they shouldn't read about it online first but if they do then you just sit them down and talk to them about it like level with them don't shelter them too much from the world but allow them to be a child as long as possible example i'm not going to allow my kid to watch um, an R-rated movie that's, you know, horror See, films. I completely disagree. I've watched those movies from a little kid. It's never okay. did anything to me. I never had a problem with it. I I'm never put, thought it was... I'm going to put my foot down on the horror uh -oh. films and... Uh-oh. You know, because... You, last time you put your foot down, they told us we had to move. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be putting your foot down without getting permits. We got to call in the city. For Christmas, I want you to give me a pedicure with your own two bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> the kitten caboodle. Man, there ain't no cure for them petties. Yeah, man. I, I Listen, I, I don't run from my past. Everyone has regrets. They could say that they don't, but, you know, I'm here with you. I have my son, so I wouldn't change any of it. And, you know, I'll always shoot my kids straight. So when he's ready to have an honest conversation about anything, like you said, it's age dictated. You know, if he's ready at 13 to ask me a tough question, I'll be prepared to answer it. I'll but be I'm going to always try and shoot him as straight as possible and, you know, give him my experience. And my experience isn't always the right experience. There's a lot of things I would do differently. And I hope he would be smart enough to, you know, hear what I've done and then make the right move. I think we've both gone through a lot. I think we've both been through a lot. I've We've seen more than most. That's the human experience. Everybody goes through shit. You know, everybody does. I, and, think that, uh, I think that there's a lot of street smarts our kid will get through our experience because our generation, we were allowed to do a lot of things that now helicopter parenting <laughs> kids don't get to do. Yeah, man. No. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly. What, like I said, I was raised by a single mother. She didn't come home from work. You know, she busted her ass I was me. working the stove in a griddle when I was six years old. I Seven, just pulled up yeah, a chair. Man, I would go buy her cigarettes, like by myself at, you know, seven, eight years old to the store and they would sell me her cigarettes. You but know, it's, it's not just the latchkey kid. It's also kids that were allowed to ride their bikes to faraway places. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, I was allowed to hop on the subway and go to D.C. and look at all those art museums and see a bunch of cool stuff. And on the way, some sketchy things could happen when you're walking down the streets of D.C., the number one drug capital and murder capital of the world. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, same thing. We were, I was growing up in New York City during the height of the crack epidemic. You know what I mean? I got to a fight every day. The mayor of D.C. was caught smoking crack with his pants down, allegedly. Was he not? Mary and Barry. Let, let, listen, let's, <laughs> let's not sully the guy's name. I don't think that his pants were down. Yes, he was smoking crack. In a hotel room, but his, he, oh, his, he had pants his pants were on. on. He had his yeah. pants on. No, I was he won re-election too. He got his. He, he, he was re-elected. So apparently, they're very forgiving in DC. Oh, anyway, I mean, I have mad DC pride. I bet you do. Now, let me ask you this: This is from Ash Noel XOXO. What would you say is the unbreakable link between you two? What keeps you together? Till the dirt, baby. Yes. Yes. I think your love for us keeps us together. <laughs> Yeah, no. I mean, listen, I'm a very, uh, I'm a very loyal guy. You should I go look down at me when you answer this question. I go down with the ship. You're it. You're it with me. It's me and you. And the the kid honestly bonds us forever, though. Prior to him, uh, you might get to a point where you're like, all right, I had enough. Well, I was we gonna say leave. no because I wanted to be like we're romantic enough and in love enough. But maybe you're right. Maybe there would. Be, I mean, I don't think so though. I feel like 
if we didn't have a kid because we tried and we couldn't have a kid, then we'd have to like work really hard to heal from not being able to have a kid. Agreed. Which there's a lot of people who are in that situation. It would have been tough. And, uh, you know, obviously those are future episodes that we'll get to as well. That whole process, the IVF process. My wife, she's she's a powerful woman and she's very... If there's somebody out there who's... When she wants something, you know, it's going to happen, dude. And she's she just gets her way, bro. And she wanted that baby and all the things that they threw at her. Well... Here the question was for another day too. Here, but, here the question was: What's the thread that keeps us bound together? What's the super glue for you and me? Let's answer it. Everyone can say the kids, okay? Every literally, Doctor Laura can say. Everyone can say the kids, okay? Well, it's not kids. We have a kid, but okay. No, no. Every married person, yeah. every two yeah. adults can say the kid. Kept, yeah. The kids keep us together. Yeah, but it's not. What is the super glue? I don't know. What the super glue is. I'm devoted to you. That's it. The sun rises and sets for me. I know you. what it is for me. You're the beat of my heart, kid. I don't know what else. I'll tell you what it is for What me. is it? And I'm going to say it without crying. All right. Because I want to be the love that you deserved when you were a child that you didn't get from your mom when she passed away because she wasn't around. Yeah. And from your dad because he wasn't around. He's a douchebag. So mm. I want to be the love that you deserved to have after when your parents weren't around. Those would have been better vows than the ones you gave me. As well, that's what to, I was trying to I say. I want to love you more. <laughs> I did cry, but not You did much. cry. Wow, look at that. Our next question is from Camille Esfandi. That's Persian. Thank you. Shout out to my Persian people. Do you want another baby or adoption in the future? Yes, I do. I do. I want more children. I want Shams to have some siblings. I'm down to adopt them. I've been thinking, of, I don't want to necessarily say I've been thinking about it too, because for a long time it, it seems so crazy to me. But over the last, you know, whatever, especially when, you know, you start to go to some of these parties and whatever, and you see these kids that have siblings. And, you know, I, I think it would be cool for the little guy to grow up with a partner in crime. I don't want to be uh, the old dad. I don't want you to be the old mom. I would like for him to have someone that he could, you know, confide in, run around when, you know. We're going to get older too, you know, and I don't want him to feel like the responsibility of, of us it's should fall on, on his, his shoulders. shoulders. This is really, really emotional for me, and I don't want to, like, get even more drained, from, but I'm so excited that you're saying these things. And we could pop that embryo in too that we have or that's adopt. true we could we could you know kidnap a girl off the street and make her have our for make her have our child you and i are a blended family culturally and i think that it would be cool to add culture if we do adopt i would be very open to that you know i, I come from queens it is the most this is not hyperbole it is the most gentrified gentrified city on the planet you know there are all types and all walks of life i i would you know i'm married to a persian bro. i don't you know my dick would have marched on washington if it was, you know, I don't care. You my, know. my dad was there, actually. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Just happened to mention that. Awesome. It's definitely something that I'm, I, I don't know if I'm there all the way yet, but it's definitely something I'm a lot more amenable to. The next question, do you ever wish that you had a daughter? This comes from BL.OSSOM5542. So it looks like Blossom5542. Uh, do you ever wish you had a daughter? No, no, I don't. And that's no offense, ladies. You know, I just, I, I feel I'd be a, I'm, I'm a much better boy dad than I think I would be a girl dad. Girl dad, I, you know, I'd be throwing braces on her if she didn't need them. I'd be like handcuffing her to the radiator to make sure she couldn't go out and like meet boys. And I would be real bad. You know, I'd want to put her in bubble wrap and never leave the house. It would just, yeah, it would just like the guy. You sound like you are a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Do you want to yeah, wrap her in bubble wrap? No, I just, I would want to do anything and like all to you, keep her. Like, you know, uh, I know how guys are, you know what I mean? And I would just want to protect her from men. With my son, he runs head first into something. He cries for two seconds. I, we're, we're back. All right, we're good. My answer to that is I never thought, do I want a boy or a girl? It was always about health. But to me, ha happy and healthy is all, what, what, all okay. what, I, what I cared about. I think I fall into this rare category where I don't want to choose. I just want to say we're in God's hands. 
it's too big of a thing. I do think that girls are going to be a lot harder to raise than boys. But if like this came up, I would just be like, I don't know, just give them to me. Whatever it's supposed to be, just give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, happy, healthy, that's that's always first and, pr and most important. But I just... But just not a girl so they don't get wrapped in bubble wrap. Yeah, man. By the I way, just, if we do like adopt... Like I said, I think, I'm doing, I think I'm doing the girl a favor, dude. You know what I mean? By the <laughs> like, way, so I think that the adoption agency does a background check on us. They're not giving us a girl. They're going to hear this and yeah, they're they going to say... Edit, we got to edit that part out again. But I'm being honest. You know, I like... Uh, girls are great, but I would be so nervous all the time with the, with the girl. All right, the next question comes from MRS, Mrs. underscore Bins, B-I-N-N-S 621. Now, th th I actually know, well, I know them personally. She actually reached out to me. We've had a conversation. I actually know who this is. So I know who the question is. If you go back in time, would you still show the progression of your relationship and the birth of your son on television, or would you keep everything private and out of the spotlight? First of all, I've always been one of those people who doesn't embarrass about things that like I, I just don't embarrass very easily so showing the world that we had fertility issues in order to get our son the fact that people connected to that and needed to see that and it inspired and helped other people is exactly the reason why you know i'm glad we did that well i With could no take regrets. it a, i could actually take it a step further because like i said i actually know this person and we had a we spoke on Instagram and she made the point that when you were going through what you went through with your dad, that it was real influential because she had gone. So when you hear that type of thing from someone, when, you know, when a complete stranger tells you out there that you affected their life in a positive way, in a meaningful way, I think that the juice is worth the squeeze. You know, it's worth us showing what we show if it can relate and help people. Uh, that's a powerful thing. That's a humbling thing. So, you know, obviously there are moments and times when you may regret it, but in the big picture, uh, no, it's not something that I regret. For me, the reason I have no regrets about sharing my experience is because I desperately need to learn from other women's journeys. I need another person to show me what they've been through. I need the conversation starter. I need the push emotionally to have the guts to go to the doctor. I need a kick in the ass to make that appointment to check my AMH levels, which is how many eggs and follicles I have. There is no other way for me to connect on the most important subjects in life, such as procreation, unless I have something else to go off. And I know from thousands of people, and I'm saying thousands without exaggeration, because of me and Dr. Shaheen Gadir have had these responses of people, women getting their eggs frozen because of our story, people getting embryos frozen because of our story, people having babies because of our stories and giving people hope. I know with that we did that. And it's so extremely important when you're a woman and you wake up every morning and you're just trying to get struggling to get from point A to B, who's going to stop you? Is someone at the, at the red light going to roll down their window or someone in front of you at the Starbucks going to be like, Hey, what's your plan for fertility, infertility, and creating your future and your family? A lot of the girls these days, women these days who are very, very busy getting their education and their careers off the ground, and then they're struggling to find the right man or woman that they want to have their children with, they're too busy to think about tomorrow, let alone five years from now. You know, we're all struggling so much. We need someone and that's okay. I'm, I'm talking too much, but that's it. Like in life, we're so busy focused on today that it's hard for us to think about tomorrow. And that's why when someone watches our show and sees that episode about fertility or that journey and then says, wait a minute, maybe I should do this. Yeah. And they're only 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, wherever that matters a lot to me. Thank you. All right. So I love this next question because I used to be a psycho and I would have definitely, I love, I just, let me read it. Okay. 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 Do you think if y'all met each other 10 years ago, you would have dated? So Diana, Diana is me, 44. If Tommy met me 10 years ago, he would probably date me and then I would scare the shit out of him 
because I think we all know that I was a handful 10 years ago. Yeah, I, I, is it ten? We've already been together for almost ten years. So Seven is different. Three years before I met you, I was something else. Oh, uh, me too, man. I was chasing a ton of tail. No, uh, but I mean, I think I would have scared you away. I was wild. I don't, I don't scare easily, but you know, um, I definitely wasn't looking to date anybody three years prior to that. You know, so what like were you I doing? said. Me and what Jamie were, were running through this town. Yeah, but uh, I was Lakers one of... Lakers had won a couple of titles. Uh, we were Kardashian adjacent, as you like to say. Uh, trust me, man. We were playing Stinky Pinky. We were playing, uh, you know, uh, Pinocchio. We were playing all types of... We were t- playing all types of fun games with the broads. There was no stopping dating anyone. There were times I don't even know I was giving my real name out. You know what I mean? Like, we'd go out and I would... You know, especially with him, because like I said, he was uh, he was a lot more in the spotlight. I wasn't, but I was with him. So, you How know. How many, like, I mean, like every single night? I wouldn't go as far as to say every single night, but there were a lot of nights. Do you think you would have just not, I wouldn't have been enough because they're on I don't to the think next? You I don't think you would have dealt with someone like me at that point in my life. It doesn't sound like I would because no, usually I, I would. would deal with people that were wrapped around my finger. Yeah, no, I definitely would not on have been my around. Doorstep. I definitely would not have been wrapped around anybody's finger at that point in time. Just because... How do you know? They're str- a- because they're strength in numbers. You take your shot. If she's like, uh, no, I, no, I want to... Sorry, see you later, lady. There's going to be another girl in here that's going to be real impressed with what I got going on. Unfortunately, especially in LA. You want to sit court side of the Laker game? You know what I'm saying? You want to sit courtside? All right. You want to go? You know what I mean? Like that would have been that would have impressed me for sure. Yeah. So that's but what I'm saying. That's, that's, remember, that's an impressive tool to have. Remember um, your friend that was a lawyer that was really cool and a female. That yeah. you had a lot of respect for her. You thought she was awesome. Yes. And you thought she was attractive. Yes. And so I think I was one of those girls. I yeah, think like, I was no, a girl like, that was super sassy, smart, and hot. Yeah. I think like I said, thought- I wouldn't have dealt with you at that time. And that's no disrespect to you. Like, there's other girls I know that came through my life at that point, too. Diana is me, 44, said, dated. She didn't say yeah, no, get I wouldn't married. have dated. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have dated. I wasn't I looking know. to date. Diana, I disagree with them. I think if he met me. Diana is me, uh, 44. I'm letting you know there was like 44 different broads at a time at that point. Like, I wasn't dating anyone. Like I well, said. Well, Diana. You know, it, it was just, it was a perfect time to not take anybody serious. You know, to just go out and just have fun with my man and be like, yo, she's cute. Oh, she's cute. It was kind of having pick of the litter type stuff. And, more, you know, guys don't usually have pick of the litter. And guys don't usually have the po- the position to be like, all right, so uh, you, buy, so you want me to buy your drink? Instead of sounding so excited that your drool is coming out of both sides of your <laughs> mouth. It's a good time, man. Why don't you time. just say, I was kind of distracted. I was distracted. There's okay. listen, you, girls are beautiful, man. You, you're all beautiful. Yeah. You know, at that really particular looking. point in time, I wasn't I wasn't ready to date anybody. I just wasn't. Okay, we get it. Yeah. You're and you were you, you look what you're talking about. You two, you're a, me- a mental case. You said three years prior to that. You were a handful of your words. I was wild. Yeah. So you think I was gonna stop what I was doing and go messing around with a handful? A a, a certified self-proclaimed handful I probably, spoiled brat I know? probably I probably would have ended up being one of your female stables and your crew as a friend I could definitely see that and we had that for sure You've met a couple of them. We definitely had a few ladies that hung out in the mix that were cool enough to like hang out and be your friend yeah. And then we would both probably want to not be tied down to each other and then we'd fall in love later Yes, yes, I'll give you that kid Thank I'll give you. you that kid. See, Diana, sure. in the end, I always win. Oh, yeah, Diana. That's <laughs> it. <sighs> okay. These are so fun, you guys. I hope that y'all yeah, are enjoying the few, them, Yeah, I'm looking too. forward to doing the other episodes of this, too. I think that uh, this is great. It's stuff that we probably wanted to ask each other as well, and we just never put it in the question to do it. So when you have someone else do the dirty work for you, it, it, it allows us to get here with the other side of the person is thinking. So I think it's awesome. Uh, our next question comes from Mandy Manding O. Price. I hope I said that right. Either way, you're going to get a t-shirt, Mandy. Who is the strict parent and who is the more laid back parent? No question. I am the stricter parent. I think it's a Persian. That's not true. It's not even close. 
not like it's not even a comp- you're not even anywhere. The per like a Persian parenting method is basically just let the kid kind of do whatever he wants. As long as he's happy, as long as he's enjoying himself, just let him kind of have at it. Um, he wants to, you know, play with the firearm. You know, he wants to. You, you, you like playing with matches. Uh-huh, you like. You, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's the truth. No, it's the truth. And your mother's the same way. No, 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 no. He likes. He likes. Actually, when it comes to his safety, which is what you just brought up, I'm not the one that leaves knives on the edge of the that, counter. It has nothing to do with who's the stricter parent. Okay. I'm, he's now starting to be the healthy amount of afraid of me. No, he's not at yeah. all. At all. Like you, why lie to the people, babe? Because they my like mom. They like being real. Because my mom you're said. You're a layup. You're a layup. Like literally, you're a layup. Because I reason with my child. No, you're a layup. Anything that he needs, like, right, I'm just make mama cry. I'm just crying. My mom I'm said. Little tears. <laughs> and mama freaks out. Here's because she'll come running from five rooms away. What? Where? What's the matter? What, what happened? What happened? Oh, 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 yeah. My mom said that when she wants to threaten him, which she does, she asks that's, him. That's, that's chapter three in Vita, Darth Vita's book. How to threaten she, she, your child. Your two-year-old. Yes. Good threats. Grandson. Good threats. So she goes, I'm going to tell Mercedes you want me to tell mommy? And then he always goes, no, no. Oh, and he yeah, shakes Because shakes between his the two of so, you, yeah, okay, you're worse than us. She doesn't care. Like I said, if he's happy, she does not care. You want the keys to the car? Mandy. You want to go Mandy, drive? Mandy, this she, guy, I can't take him anymore. Can you just, okay, I'll give him, I'll give this to you. You're more strict. It's not even close. Okay. I mean, you can't give it to me. It's not like it's not even close. Okay. Fine. However, stay tuned because when he's five and 10 and 14 and whatever, he'll also be in your bosom. You're going to strap him to, you're going to be, you're going to be on his back till he goes to college. Who are you kidding? Maybe Who are he'll you do, kidding? maybe he'll do what I did and stay local for university. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, no, we're, we're going to make sure that he's only two years and four months. Leave him alone. Okay, Tommy. And, and by the way, you don't need to discipline yet. So it's not about strict yet. Okay, next. Uh, yeah, this next question, uh, it's actually for you, babe. So it's directed to you. It's from Truth Love 808 If you were gifted with one moment with Tommy's mom, what would you say or ask? So how long is the moment? Like, do I get to kick it with her for an hour? She doesn't specify. But, okay, so the parameters of this hypothetical are... Yeah, I don't know if it's five with... seconds. Uh, maybe I get to gift... She said, what would you say or ask? So maybe you're only... Maybe it is only a moment. Moments are fleeting. I would ask Francis, Fran, Fran, as, yeah. as she would be called. It would be Fran. I would say, hey, Fran, June, I love you so much. Thank you for creating this beautiful man. I can't imagine how hard it was for you to have to know that you were terminally ill. So I'm really, really sorry that you had to go through that and know that you had to leave your beautiful little boy. Since that's the case, what is the thing that you want me to do specifically? Like, what are mom's orders to take care of your son? Do you want me to, like, slap him around? Do you want me to, like, cook for him more? She might want you to slap me around. She might want you. Listen, I give you the business about your feet. Nobody, nobody had worse feet in this universe than my mother. Those Uh... Those things were terrifying. So, so maybe the two things you should say is, uh, what do you use, Doctor Scholz? <laughs> I mean, if both of us didn't have good feet, then why would I need to ask her? Uh, yeah, it's true. It's true. You're so that's crass. True. That's true. That was really, really well thought out, Tom. Yeah, that's um, true. No, I would really just ask... a little levity. Don't worry. That was beautiful, babe. That was great. That was no. A nice I would question. ask what What would you want me to do? Like that's exactly all. I'm like here to take orders and advice okay like any normal daughter-in-law would yeah no listen babe that was great like i said that was a great answer okay guys this is our last question and please let me just tell you i had so much fun doing this i hope you guys enjoyed it too the last question from krpc75 will you take this podcast on the road especially to seattle Hell to the motherfucking yes. Yes, we've actually been looking into that. You know, we have something down in Irvine that we might be doing. You know, but you guys got to let us know, you know. So, yes, if you guys want it, then. We'd be more than happy to bring it. Absolutely. And it's also been on our vision board. So, there's that. Yes. Yes. Before we go, I just want to tell you guys how much we appreciate when you leave five stars, leave a comment, and please tell a friend, tell two friends. If you like what we're doing and you can 
tell somebody else that you think would love these. We would appreciate it. We read all of your comments on the podcast app. And one of them right now, for instance, saying, I need a thousand more of these. It helps me get through my chores around the house, gets you through your commute. All of these comments, we're looking at them and we appreciate them. All right, guys, we will see you next week at Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. We're so happy you're coming on this journey with us. It would mean so much to us if you would rate our show, give us five stars, leave a nice comment, and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all our new episodes. You could also follow us on all platforms at Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. See you next week.